Hi, Tim Unger here, and in this video, we're going to create with Python 100 simple integrals, and we're going to put them out on a worksheet, and the worksheet's going to look like this with the actual integral symbol, the lower value, upper value, and um, x to some power with respect to x. So our problems are going to be like this. Say we go from x equals 1 to x equals 5 of x cubed with respect to x, this, by the way, would give you the area under the curve of x cubed from 1 to 5. Uh, so the way we do that is we take the antiderivative. So we'd have x over 4. Um, uh, and this is actually x to the fourth power. I should have a 4 here. x to the fourth power over 4. Um, and typically you'd have, when you when you take that, you have plus a constant, but again, we're evaluating from five to one. So we, we take from the uh, five here and we subtract the one. So if we had the constant here, the constant would subtract itself. So we don't have to include it, okay, in our problems. So, okay, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do this with Python. We're gonna use LaTeX, which is an online kind of markup uh, to, to make PDFs and, and that kind of thing. Um, I'm going to go into it a little bit. I've just started to delve into LaTeX a bit. I'm probably going to do a bit more on this channel because I do love making math worksheets in different coding languages. And so there'll be more of that. So if you like programming, if you like creating math problems, if you like mathematics, anything like that, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. It really helps the channel grow. I'll also leave links to my social links down below. I'm trying to start Twitter again, so you can follow me there, uh, and GitHub and LinkedIn, and all those kind of things. So with the, all that being said, let's get started. I have VS Code. Uh, I'm going to use the Dracula theme because I do aspire to be in a fan company someday. And uh, we just have a simple Python Microsoft um, extension enabled that's free and uh, there's also a extension for syntax highlighting for LaTeX documents which I installed as well but that's basically it so pretty light uh, VS Code installation uh, VS Code is a free text editor in case you're wondering you can just Google VS Code it is different than Visual Studio uh, that is the community version is free but the other is a paid product uh, so it's more of like a text editor slash IDE, low level kind of IDE. But um, anyways, it's great. So we're going to create a folder or open a folder. I think I might have created one. Uh, maybe in my Python programs. Yeah, here we go. Simple integral. Uh, YouTube. I think I've got some. Oh, I've got some. Uh, some, some stuff in there already. Let's just create an, another folder. And. Uh, let's call it simple dash integral dash U T for YouTube. Okay. Let's create that folder. We're in there. I'm going to go down here and click. Okay. Okay. And that's going to open the folder. And I'll walk you through as we're creating this document, I'll try and pace, uh, at, you know, at a reasonable pace so you can understand everything. But of course, if you do miss something, you can just, uh, pause the video and go back. That's a great thing about video. All right. So I'm going to create a file. I'm going to call that simple. Uh, let's call it simple underscore integral dash pi for Python. And you'll see that because I have that Microsoft extension here, I have this little play button that allows me to run the Python file once I type some code. There's nothing yet. So We'll get started. And what we're going to do is we're going to import a few different things. Uh, so I'm going to say from math import exp because we'll be using exponents. And then we'll import also a random module, okay, or the random module. Uh, so we're going to use um, random.choice for that, uh, for picking the random numbers, okay? Uh, there's a couple different ways to do it, but I'm going to do it that way. All right, so we're going to call create a class, and we're going to call that class simple integral, okay? And then we're going to instantiate the class. We're going to start with uh, the initialization 
uh, method. So we'll pass into this the self. Uh, we're going to pass in the lower range because we have to have a lower range on our integral. We're going to pass in the upper range because we also need. So I'm doing I'm typing lower underscore range, upper underscore range, and we also need the exponent. All of these are going to be randomly generated. Okay. <clears throat> Now, right now, it's it's showing me that I have an error in my file, but don't worry. Uh, we'll fix that up in no time. Uh, so we're going to say, whoops, we need a colon here. So now we're going to say self dot lower range equals lower range. And that allows us to use this in the other method that we're going to create that's going to uh, allow us to... Um, print out the solutions, okay? Because we also want to not only create the problems, we want to create the solutions as well, uh, because I do like to include an answer key uh, on my material that I put up in Teacher by Teachers. So we're also going to say self.upper range equals upper range. And then finally, self.exponent equals exponent, okay? All right, so that's our first little method we have to create. Now we want to get the value of the integral, which is going to be our solution that we're going to print to a certain file. So uh, what I'm going to say is uh, def, that's going to how I start a function or a method, and we're going to call this value underscore integral. A lot of times in Python you use snake case. So uh, in case you're wondering uh, about the formatting that I'm using, all right, so we're going to say uh, upper value, this is going to be a variable, upper underscore value is going to equal, and then we'll do in parentheses because we're going to divide this top part. If we look here, we're going to divide it by one plus whatever this exponent is, okay? So we're going to say upper value equals, uh, then we'll have self dot upper range and we'll do an exponent so two asterisks for the exponent and then self dot exponent plus one because we're increasing and then we'll do this divided by uh, self let me just uh, close up the side there self dot exponent plus one remember we increased it on the bottom as well all right so i'm just gonna do uh control c and then control v and uh, vs code if i click here and then hold down alt and click here i can edit these two at the same time so i can just write lower value uh, and that's the lower range okay and then at the end of this we'll say value equals upper a value minus lower value and at the end of this method we want to return the value okay so that's the end of our class that small little class that we created there and now what we're going to do is create two lists so one is going to be an empty list we're going to call that the random number list i'm going to use a for loop to populate that from uh, zero to fifty and then we're also going to have an exponent list. I'm just going to limit my exponents as numbers two through eight. Uh, so um, that's going to be, you know, just something I type out. Type out. So I'm going to write random num list, and it's going to be an empty list. And then we'll also have exponent underscore list, and that's going to be a list where we start at two. I'm going to go three, and I'm separating these by commas, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, uh, I'm going to save where I'm at at this point. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is populate my random number list by using a for loop. So I'm going to say for x in range, uh, and the range is going to start at one and go to 50. So I actually have to type 51 because I have to type one number higher than this. And I'm going to take my random number list and I'm going to append 
the x value. So that's going to populate my random number list with numbers from 1 to 50. Okay. Now, um, what I want to do is I want to create uh, the files. Okay. So what, I, what I'm going to do is create four different files. So I'm going to create the English file for my integral. So I'm just going to call that simple underscore integral underscore file. And I'm going to say open. And then I'm going to write uh, just what I, what, what I want to write this to. So simple dash integral dot text for because I'm going to write law tech into it dot tech really um, the X isn't really an X it's uh, Kai um, anyways so I'm going to now append to that file and I'm going to do this for uh, three other files so I'm just gonna hit control C and then control V control V control V and then we'll uh, name the other files so um, I'm going to have simple integral and then get this hovering thing here uh, underscore Spanish file and that's going to be simple integral dash Spanish and then I'm going to have simple integral the solution file and that's going to be simple integral dash solution and then I'm going to do simple integral underscore solution underscore Spanish underscore file. And that's going to be a simple integral dash uh, SOL dash Spanish. Okay. All right. I'm going to move this up here for a moment. Okay. So we've now that's going to create the files when it runs the program. So we don't have to create them. It's going to create them in the same folder that we're in. Uh, so we're good there. And uh, now what I want to do is since these are all LaTeX files, I want to write a couple things to the top of the file. So I'm going to take this code block here and just highlight it and hit control C to copy. And then I'm going to move down and hit control V to paste. And uh, what I'm going to do right here is just delete all of these. Okay. And with LaTeX, what we're going to be using is not only am I going to use F strings to pass in variables, but I'm also going to use R strings, which allow me to use backslashes and, and stuff like that, which normally would be interpreted as an escape character. Um, but in this case, um, it won't be. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do now is let's highlight all of these because we all want them to start the same way. And let's just do an R string because we are going to use a backslash here. And I'm going to, in the quote, say backslash and then document class. And then I'll do a curly braces article. And I'm going to close the curly braces. Now I'm going to copy this again, this code block again, uh, by control C and pasting it with control V. And I want to go here, all at the same spot, because we have the same thing in here. And this time, I want to delete all this stuff up through and including the R, because I don't need an R string for what I'm going to do now. And in fact, I don't want it. So I have an opening and closing quotes, and then there I'm doing slash N, slash N. That's going to bring it down two lines. So that's a formatting thing. Okay. And then let's copy this again, because now I'm going to use the R string again. And I'm going to say, go down here. And I'm going to go here again. We'll all edit this all at the same time. And go to the beginning of the quotes. Actually, right to the backslash, because we do want that backslash. That's why I have the R string there. Uh, I'm going to say 
begin, and then within curly braces, I'm gonna type document, okay? I'm gonna hit Control S to save that, all right? So that's going to set us up. So we have all of those LaTeX files have um, the document class declared at the top, a space, and then um, begin the document. Now, the other thing, I do wanna copy this again, actually, because I want, uh, you know, some space under that begin document. So I'm going to paste that. All right, so we should be ready to go now to create our for loop. And our for loop is going to be where we're actually creating the, the different problems, okay? So I'm going to start with a for loop. I'm going to say for problem in range from 1 to 101. And I'm putting 101 because I want problems to actually go from 1 to 100. Uh, I'm going to say that the lower range equals the random dot choice. That's why we imported the random module. Um, and then from the random number list. Okay, and we can hit Control C and Control V. And I want to just change this to upper range as well. Okay, now, if I just left it like that, you could potentially get the lower range being a higher number or an equal number to the upper range. So I'm going to create a while loop right now to make sure that doesn't happen. So I'm going to say while lower underscore range is greater than upper underscore range or uh, lower underscore range is equal to upper underscore range. While that's happening, we're going to run this again. So if, if either of those are true, we're gonna come here and we're gonna choose them again. And we're gonna choose them again until neither of those are true, okay? So until the lower range is actually below the upper range, okay? So, we eliminated that. You have to be careful about stuff like that. Um, you notice also I choose the exponents uh, from 2 to 8. If you chose it from 1 to 8, uh, you, well, no, nah, that'd be all right. But um, I just wanted to choose them from 2 to 8. That's random. Uh, anyways, so, <laughs> so uh, the exponent, however, that can be from 2 to 8. So let's get to our exponent. So exponent equals random dot choice. Now I don't want from one to 50, so I'm gonna use the exponent list. Uh, this right here. Okay, so now we're going to write a bunch of stuff to those files. Okay, so um, I'm gonna move down here. I'm gonna say, a new problem, we're going to create an object called new problem. So our new problem is, we'll take this class, simple integral. We're going to pass in the lower range, the upper range, and the exponent. Okay. All right. So that's good. Um, all right, so now what we're going to do is start to write to these files, okay? So I'm going to say simple underscore integral file dot write, and we're going to start off by writing an F string. So we're going to say problem, and then we want the problem number, and that's going to be um, basically uh, the problem, so this, this variable here, so problem. And I also want to space that out. So I'm going to do a slash n slash n. I'm going to do control C, control V, control V, control V. Uh, so we want the simple integral underscore Spanish file. And that's going to be instead of a problem, problema. So we have to have an A here. Uh, and then we're going to have simple integral underscore SOL underscore file. Um, we want to write the problem number and the solutions as well. 
And we also want to do our uh, underscore SLL underscore Spanish file. And we also want to change this to problema, okay? All right, so we now written the problem number. Okay, so we could make a comment here, something like write problem number. Okay, and then we're going to go down here, and now we've got to write the problem. Okay. All right, so with these two, I'm going to take these two, hit Control Z, and copy here with Control V, and then let's just go here and here. We'll edit these because we're both going to have the same thing here. And this is going to be an R string to start. So we're going to start with an R string. Uh, shoot. That was a little bit off there. Okay. So we're going to start with an R string. And um, what I need to write is the beginning part of the LaTeX in integral. So if I go and search integrals LaTeX and I go here, there's an article by overleaf.com. Okay. And you'll see it has this format. So I want the R string to go up to here. Okay. Because then we have to pass in the lower range here. So I'm going to just copy that and I'm going to paste that in. Okay. And then now what I want to do is I want to take these two again, and we're going to have to use an F string because we're going to pass in the lower range. Okay. So we'll take that here and let's edit these both. And we're going to keep our F string. So that's good. But we're passing in our lower range which is lower underscore range, okay? So we pass that in with our F string. Now we have to continue with the R string because we have to get the next part. So we're gonna copy this down here. And I'm gonna start here and here. Whoops, I wanna get them in the same spot. So here and here. Okay, and we'll copy all this, we'll delete all this stuff here. And then we're gonna go, so we passed in the lower range here, but now we have to copy this part right here. Okay, so I'm gonna hit Control C and then Control V to copy that part. Now we have to do some F strings again. Okay, so I'm gonna copy both of these. Okay, Control Z and Control V. And I'm gonna do some multi-line editing here and change lower range to upper range. Okay, I'm gonna hit Control C to save. Now we have to finish up with the last part. So let's take this again and hit Control C and then Control V. Go do some multi-line editing right here and here and we'll Delete this stuff, okay? And uh, now we've passed in that, so we have to go and take this stuff all the way through here, and then we want to pass in the exponent. So I'm gonna hit Control C and then Control V, okay? All right, and then we're gonna go down here. We want another F string, okay? So we're gonna copy both of these. Control V and we'll do some multi-line editing instead of upper range. I'm going to want exponent. So we're going to have exponent here. Okay. So now we've passed in the exponent. Now we're going to have to finish up this statement with the R string. So we're going to take this go down here. <laughs> this is a process, but uh, it's worth it. 
Okay, so now we've got the exponent in, so we want to take the rest of this. Okay, all the rest of that. So I'm going to hit Control C. And we want to get rid of this other stuff. So first we'll get rid of the other stuff. And Control V to paste in the rest. Okay. All right, finally, what we want to do is we want to, let me just, uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter. I'll take these. We're not doing an R string or an F string, but we're just doing some basic formatting here. So again, multi-line editing uh, here. And I'm going to go all the way, delete the R, because we don't need the R string. In fact, we do not want it. And then do a slash N slash N. Okay, and hit control save, that's gonna bring it down to the next line. So we've written all the problems, so that's good. Uh, now what I need to do is write the solutions. So we just need a couple lines for that. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is uh, we're gonna do some F strings. So we're gonna take the simple integral solution file and we're gonna write an F string to that, and we're going to say uh, solution, and then we're going to take, we're going to pass in the new problem object um, and use the value integral method, opening and close parentheses with the method, and then right past that, we want to do some formatting so I can do the slash n slash n. Okay, um, now it's saying there's a little bit of an issue. Missing closing brace. Okay, so I've got to close out the F string here. And it's still giving me, oh, because. Let me check. Did I get the name wrong. Value underscore integral. Okay. So this is VS Code telling me, hey, there's something a little off here. And I'm just looking at my notes and ah, I don't want to pass this slash. I don't want to end the curly braces before I'm doing the new line. So that's, that's a cool thing about VS Code. It does have that debugging. It lets you know before you have a problem. So now I see there are no problems with this file so far. So, so far, so good. I'm going to do Control C, Control V to move it down to the next line. Put in underscore Spanish here. And instead of solution, it should be solution. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, there should be a little accent here, but again, that might be a little bit of a limitation. Um, I could take a look into that. And in fact, I may in the future about how I, how I get that exactly, that symbol. I'm sure there's a way to do it. I just haven't looked into it yet. Okay, so we've um, written down the solutions here in our file. So we're going to move out of the for loop now. And before we close everything, we want to uh, do one more R string. So we're going to do simple integral file and we're going to say dot write. We're going to write an R string. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a backslash end and then in curly braces, we'll write document. So this is necessary. So you don't throw errors when you try and convert your LaTeX file to PDF. Okay. So I'm going to hit control C and then control V, control V, control V. And we want to have the solution file. We want to have all our files end this way. So we have the solution file, the Spanish file, the solution Spanish file. Okay. Okay. All right. And now, finally, what we want to do is copy all these. And we need to we need to close these files. Uh, 
Okay, so what I'm going to do here is just do some multi-line editing. Go all the way to the period here. And then type close and then open and closing parentheses. And hit control S to save. Okay, so that should be it. Let's run the program and see if we have any issues. Okay, so we're going to run it. So you see the terminal pops up. We do have a little bit of an issue. Ah, okay. This is in line. So this lets us know line 27. We have something a little messed up. Okay. So I think I did write something wrong instead of open here. Ah, okay. I've got to fix a lot of stuff, but luckily, Hey, I can do multi-line editing to fix that. So that's the issue with copying and pasting. Let me see. So instead of open, I should have dot right. Okay. So I'm going to fix that with some multi-line editing in VS code. So I'm going to go here, here, oops, here, 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 here. Bear with me. Here, here, here. Here, 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 and here. Okay. So now I'm going to go back here, right to the end of the file, and do dot and then write. Okay. All right. I'm going to hit Control S to save. Um, <sighs> Let's see, have we created those files? Yeah, we have, so we probably want to delete these out just because there was an error. Let's just delete them, just to make sure. So we'll move these to trash. Delete them. It's gonna take a moment because I'm filming, it's a little slow. All right, we'll delete that. Even though there's nothing written on them, I think wouldn't really matter, but I just want to make sure we start with a fresh plate. So we'll delete. Okay. All right. So we've got our Python program. Let's go up and try this again. So we're going to run. And did it run? Let's see. Oh, yeah, it ran. Okay. So it, it ran faster than I even expected. Okay. So we've got these files created now. That's pretty sweet. Let's just take a look at the files for a moment. So let's take a look at our simple integral.txt. We've got, now this is where I've got that highlighting. We've got our integrals written. Pretty nice. Okay. Uh, let's look at the Spanish version. Okay. Looks good. The solution. Okay, solutions are looking good. And the solutions in Spanish are looking good. Okay, so now we want to open a terminal in VS Code. And I do that with Control Shift and then the back tick, which um, is the button right below the escape on a Chromebook. Okay, so um, I am doing this on a Chromebook in case you're wondering. Um, or you can just go up to here and open the terminal this way. Okay. So now um, you do have to have Pandoc and TextLive Extra installed to make this work, at least on Debian 10. So once you have those installed, you can type in these commands. So I can start Pandoc and then I can do simple uh, integral uh, dot text and then do the output of simple integral um, dot PDF. Okay. 
And I'm going to run that. I'll take a moment and it'll create a PDF file. Okay, so you see now the PDF file has been created. So we can go to our files. Uh, let's see, where was I? This is, here we go. Here's the one file we created. Let's open it and take a look. Okay, so we've now got our nice integral symbol all formatted nicely uh, for our problems here. So, um, yeah, if you're wondering how you can get that, you can do it with LaTeX and you can automate it with Python. Now, for the rest of the files, uh, what I would do and what I did is I used the pan.com command just with the different file names. And this dash O is what the output of the file name is that you want. And that's basically it. So if you're on a Chromebook, install VS Code. Um, you can, the extensions that I'm using, let's bring those up. It's going to take a moment. Hopefully it'll bring up and okay, here we go. So we've got Dracula, uh, the Jupiter and this Jupiter key map, Jupiter notebook, and PyLance and Python that comes with uh, basically the uh, Microsoft Python extension pack. So when you start a Python program in VS Code, it's going to prompt you to install it. It's free. So uh, it works. And then, you know, Dracula's free theme. LaTeX language support is what I chose. That was like the third one down. It seemed to work the best. Um, that one just gives me the gave me the syntax highlighting for the LaTeX files. I, I'm hoping I'm not saying LaTeX because sometimes they say it. it's LaTeX. But anyways, um, so th that's all the extensions that you need pretty much for this, uh, and then you're good to go. Um, and I'll just show you what you can install. And you can do this via the terminal. Let's actually create a new file. So you can do that with Control N. And let's just make it a text file here. So let's go TXT, uh, plain text. That's what I want. And okay, so I think it's just going to, let me just start typing. So you're going to type sudo apt install. Uh, and then you want to install pandoc to do this. And then text live latex extra. Okay. And that's what you're going to need to create these programs in LaTeX. I'm actually not going to save this, but anyway, so you could type that. It'll go through the install. It'll ask you, do you want the space? You say yes. If you want it, you want to take up space uh, for these programs and you're interested in doing that. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. Uh, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. I'll also include a link to the Teacher Pay Teachers worksheet that I created during this video if you want to monetarily support the channel in that way. Um, I'll also include my social links, GitHub, Twitter, LinkedIn, in the description below. And stay tuned. If you've been watching the channel, we've been doing, uh, well, I've been creating a 90s-style blog experiment. I think it's up to 39 users 10 days in. Uh, so I want to see how much traffic I can get just with no paid advertisements, just 90 style blog doesn't look particularly great, just good content and sharing it on social networks. Uh, so I'm going to include a link to that in the description, but I also will have an actual write up of this process going on the blog uh, shortly by the end of today, hopefully. And uh, so stay tuned for that. Anyways, thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next video and have a great day.